Greetings, students, and welcome to this episode of The Professor Travel. I am your host, The Professor Travel, coming to you from Orange County, California. This is the website, the vlog, and the podcast that you go to in order to learn more about different places. This is where you come to as a community in order to discuss different sites and locations that you go to. Hopefully, you'll be able to travel more as part of this experience and, of course, enjoy life more. Now, you can always reach me on a variety of different social media, but please definitely start by finding my website at www.theprofessortravel.com. You can also find me on both uh, YouTube and Facebook at The Professor Travel. I'm now available on TikTok at The Professor Travel. Um, you can find me on Instagram at The underscore Professor underscore Travel. If you're on Twitter, you can find me at The Professor TR1. And if you're a blogger, please find me on Blogspot at theprofessortravel.blogspot.com. Today we have a return visiting professor, um, Professor Justin Brent. Please say hello to everybody, Justin. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Thanks so much for coming back. For those of you who have not had an opportunity to view his wonderful video, um, we actually did a vlog a couple months ago on a trip, that, a business trip that he did to London. But this is a little bit of a different trip. This one, uh, you, took, you went to Aruba, is that correct? Yes, sir. Awesome. Now, before we get into that, um, and just for people who may have not seen the previous video, can you maybe go over a couple of your uh, credentials, maybe a little bit about your education and some different places that you've traveled in the past? All right. So I'm a marketing manager for the British Medical Journal based out of Hoboken, New Jersey. I've been to now 26 countries my um, entire life. Uh, I tend to do a lot of group travel trips. Mm -hmm. I'm single, um, so I don't really have that many people to travel with. A lot of my friends are married and have families, so I tend to join travel um, group trips. Um, I, what Scott was talking about, I uh, have my master's in management, bachelor's is in history. I've been in marketing. I've been marketing management now the last four years, where I probably will be until retirement, <laughs> and I work... I've been working for multinational companies the last couple of years. So my traveling is going to increase tremendously, not just socially, but professionally. That's awesome. And it's one of those things, I think once you do a lot of international travel, you kind of get that travel bug. Correct. It's really cool to kind of explore the different cultures and see things. I mean, there are things, and I think we talked about it in your, in the previous uh, vlog that you know there are certain things in some countries that you love and other things that you don't love um and that's totally cool it's just a matter of kind of feeling what's out there and then maybe you get a, a better glimpse for what you can what you like and then helping of course to share that with the community so that way they can have, kind of raise that awareness if there's a if there's a concern or an issue that might be out there i also believe op opening your mind to something unexpected yeah it I helps out with that traveling it also helps you be to become accepted to the visiting community. I believe this is why I've, to this day, I never went anywhere and didn't have a friend that I'm still in contact with or an acquaintance I met that via social media, I still can reach out to because of my mindset when traveling. And that's just, that's including domestic. Um, I'm going to Austin in two weeks for a conference. Never been to Austin. I've been in Houston, but never been to Austin. Open mindset. I'm going to Portland in May, right before my Bali trip. Literally, I land and hop on another plane. Never been to the uh, Pacific Northwest. Well, we will definitely need to talk about your trip to Indonesia on another vlog as well when you get back because I'm going to be very curious about that. I've never and been I'm going there for an, I'm going in for 10 days. Oh, that sounds amazing. Actually, well, let's, 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 trans, let's transition into this trip really quick here. Okay. I'm okay. kind of curious. So you decided to go to Aruba on this trip. What was your motivation and why did you decide to go on this trip? So, um, as I stated before, I do a lot of group trips. Uh, one of the groups that I've been going with is a group called Sky Residents. Mm -hmm. uh, and included in that in that trip was the the co the founder's birthday and oh. he had planned it around his birthday and normally especially for us in the northeast in the winter time 
we escaped to the islands. Mm -hmm. I being of island background, I understand. And I've been used to the the normal, as I would say, the normal Caribbean. There's the Hispanic Caribbean, and there's also the Dutch Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And then you have your normal British, formerly um, owned by British, um, now their own independent country Caribbean. Yeah. But going to Aruba, it's being that it's part of the the Dutch Caribbean. I've been to Curacao. Mm -hmm. Aruba is another part of the ABC Islands that is right above South America. And when you're referring to ABC, for those who are not really in the know, that's Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. Is that correct? Bonaire, yes. Okay. So, and I've and I've been to Saint Martin, which is another Dutch, um, another Dutch Caribbean island. Although Saint Martin has like two sides, they have the French side and they have the Dutch side, right? Correct. Okay, cool. So it sounds like you were really getting this well planned out. Um, so how many days was this going to be for? Uh, five. Five days. Okay. And did you have any kind of special like travel needs? Like, do you have to get a visa in order to go to to Aruba or special travel medications? Any kind of special changes to your diet? Anything like that? None, none whatsoever. Okay, cool. So then let's talk about the packing process, because obviously you're going down to the Caribbean, the Southern Caribbean specifically, and it's going to be a little bit warm, I would imagine, during that time of year. What do you pack for that? The weather never went above 85 and never below 78 the entire trip. Oh my gosh, that sounds beautiful. I, I honestly overpacked. <laughs> but you're a fashionista, so you got, you got like oodles. Uh, outfit, uh, out, two, three outfits per day. <laughs> and when I mean that, I mean that in the best possible way. You are oh, probably one of the GQS people I know. So I, I appreciate that compliment. I will say, because I am a Amex Platinum holder, mm -hmm. Amex pays for my bags. Okay. So I use my credit to pay for my bag. So I packed a little, a little extra. Um, and one thing about these group trips, there are full itineraries for these trips. There is a, a, uh, I call it the, the seven to seven AM to midnight, uh, inclusion on this trip. Mm -hmm. And the one thing about these trips, they're not at your four or five star resorts. They're at a four or five star Airbnb. Okay. Um, there were 21 of us. Uh, there were, it was 21 of us in a four floor mansion. Oh, nice. And one of the things about Aruba, Aruba is a very cosmopolitan island. So there is a downtown section that looks like Rodeo or Fifth Ave. Nice. Uh, it would rain off and on, but nothing crazy. It sits outside Hurricane Alley. So the there wasn't going to be any signs of bad weather yeah and it's one of those things where it's it's south enough that it's kind of i guess blocked a little bit by some uplets from south america so Correct. it's not getting a lot of the brunt of hurricanes that go across the caribbean um did you need to bring any type of like like sun protection like a like a sunscreen a hat sunglasses things like that well i brought because of my taste in fashion, I did bring sunglasses, but, but there wasn't a need for sunblock or anything outside the ordinary summertime day in the States. Okay. So just whatever you would normally do for like a summertime in, in the States, pretty much. Correct. How is the humidity down there? Non-existent. Oh, wow. That's really awesome. So you're not even getting like hints of that. Like, I, cause I know when you go to the, like, the Northern Caribbean section, you know, as you get closer to Florida and New Orleans, you tend to get a lot of the humidity and that just kind of sucks the water out of your body in effect. Right. Yeah. Right. It's normal. Well, being in the New York city area, summertime humidity, it gets very, very, like as soon as you walk outside, you feel it. Yeah. In Aruba, that wasn't the case at all. It was, the per it was, it, I compared it to San Diego. Mm. I yeah. compared it weather-wise to San Diego. Okay, beautiful. And actually, to my to my listeners, uh, to to the students that are out there, um, there are actually a lot of places that are island-type 
environments, whether it's on the East Coast or the West Coast, that do have a somewhat cosmopolitan feel to a downtown district. Even a place that you go like Honolulu, Hawaii, where it's very nature driven and oriented and it's beautiful and, and all of the things that are associated with that look gorgeous. You still have like the downtown malls and things like that. So there's a beautiful combination of both nature and urban at the same time. And it's something to explore. And it's really quite different than stuff that we have directly here in the States. So that being the case, um, I assume you leave out of Newark? Yes. Okay, perfect. And which airline did you take? United. Perfect. One of my favorites. Um, how was the trip itself? Um, like how many stops did you have? And uh, good. So good that? question. I was supposed to leave on a Friday night to Chicago, stay there for the night and then fly to Aruba from Chicago. But we were expecting a snowstorm to hit Saturday and it was sweeping Ooh. Midwest to East. Yeah. So United uh, gave me a courtesy bump and changed my flight to go directly to Aruba Saturday morning. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I guess a good lucky thing for me is that my mother works United Customer Service in North Airport, so I just called mom, showed her the email I got, and I could hear her nails punching away and <laughs> clackety clackety clackety. <laughs> literally, it was like, okay, you're done. It's set. Love you, bye. <laughs> so, gotta go. Love you, bye. I'm like, okay, I gotta love you, bye. And <laughs> uh, I went from leaving Friday night to Saturday morning due to the due to the weather. So I. Uh, Tip my hat to United for taking care of that and for seeing um, that to come. And I actually have one of those type of warnings coming up for my for my Bali trip as well because I'm supposed to fly to Hong Kong. Oh yeah, be careful right now with the. Well, um, well, I booked that flight through Am through my a Amex Travels, and Amex has been in contact with me already, monitoring the situation and preparing for changes if and when they should come. Yeah, and actually, for those who are not fully keeping aware of this, um, and for those who may be watching this in the future, we're talking about the coronavirus and what's going on, especially in the Asian market. Like a lot of cruise lines have canceled their cruises, a lot of flights have canceled their stuff in order to isolate the spread of the coronavirus um, across the Asian front and hopefully isolate that. Um, and there's a lot of security that's going into that right now. And, and people are being detained, uh, you know, by different types of agencies uh, to make sure that they're not spreading this. So it can be a real change in your travel plans. And, you know, you know, Justin, you're lucky enough that where you have that ability to change those things from time to time. Um, some people will also go through and get trip insurance just in case of stuff like that. I can tell you, like, I'm going to be heading out to the Caribbean next month. Um, and I decided to purchase travel insurance, not just because of the things like the coronavirus, but also, you know, that sometimes the weather can be very unpredictable, especially in the Eastern Caribbean or, uh, heading towards the Southern Caribbean, but mostly in the Eastern Caribbean and a couple of the places and stops I'm going to be making are along there. Uh, so I don't want to make, I, I want to make sure that if there is a situation where the trip gets delayed, canceled, whatever the case may be because of weather, even though it's not necessarily that time of year, but you can never predict these days. I wanted to have that trip insurance available to me just because of that. So um, now when you decided to go as part of this group cruise, did they already have any type of like set up pre-planned excursions ahead of time? Correct. Uh, first thing we did was we ATV along the coast of Aruba. Nice. I believe we went from the middle of town in these ATVs to the beach and then along the coastline of, of Aruba. And what was, was there a specific city in Aruba that you went to? Well, we was all around Williams of Arnstead. Okay. I'm getting confused between Arnstead and Williamstead. So I've been to both. Okay. Oh, Arnstead. Williamstead is in uh, Curacao. Okay. So, um, we get Arnstead. We'd be in, we were in this big uh, multi-level parking deck. Mm -hmm. And as you would do a, a via a car, we ATV'd all 21 of us to the beach and then along the coastline of Aruba. <laughs> that sounds really nice, actually, especially considering the weather that you're talking about. It just sounds like a really beautiful time on the beach. It was perfect because it, you, you, I wasn't sweating under the, under the helmet. 
Um, I still have my uh, face mask. It's the elastic cover because sand does pop up, especially when you're in a line of ATVs. Um, it was awesome, awesome ride. A little different, a little bumpy. Very, very. Uh, it was very, very hard on, on my on my back. You had to take some time, which we did. We we would stop, uh, see certain sites like the gold mines, or the natural pool, the natural bridge of Aruba. Uh, definitely. I would, I would imagine though, if you're doing ATV or even off roading, that you're expecting that it to be a little bit bumpy. But yeah, if you're it, you bring up a good point. If you're one of those travelers that have some like back issues or neck issues, maybe you kind of want to be cautious or just a little bit apprehensive about things like that because you just want to be careful. I believe a, a UTV would be best for that. Mm. And the UTV is like is pretty much the off-road golf cart. Okay. That would be the – or a Jeep, a Wrangler. That way you're buckled in, you know, so that way right. that helps. Cool. What other kinds of activities did you guys do while you were over there? In our uh, so the first day we did our ATV ride. Mm -hmm. At night we did the catamaran. Oh, nice. Now, this catamaran was different from any other catamarans I've been on. Now, for those that don't know, a catamaran is a boat with, a, with two large nets in the front so people can lay out over the water as the boat uh, is pretty much doing its route. Mm -hmm. Normally, catamarans, it's the private party of the, or, of the group. This one was the group plus whoever ordered the catamaran ride. So imagine a bunch of mid-20s to mid-30s on one side, retirees on another, <laughs> And, and families with little kids on another. We weren't expecting this. <laughs> but there's one local, was one local dance floor and a DJ. And once beverages were imbibed and the music was playing, everybody came together on the dance floor. So it turned out to be better than expected. That was that night. Can I ask you a question about some of the food and drink that you guys had while you were on your trip? Yeah. Oh, the most amazing fish I've ever had. What kind of fish? I, I still don't rem. I don't remember. Well, it was because of the drinks, you know. <laughs> right, because I don't remember the fish, but I remember the fish tasting great. The fish was um amazing and it was uh, i got it from a restaurant that was kind of a combination of a red lobster and a mcdonald's it was it was literally wasn't too far it wasn't like a drive through but yeah. when you drove up they had a restaurant in the back and you could either take it and leave or you could stay hmm. and the, the most the best tasting fish i've ever had nice. and I'm not, I'm not a real i'm not a real seafood person but that fish that fish uh that fish hit the uh hit the soul <laughs> hit the soul <laughs> so to speak maybe it was soul hmm how about that um here's the other question too now when people think of caribbean they're either thinking of one of two drinks either rum or pina coladas like i assume Correct. those were primarily the ones that were being thrown out there to you that, or that, that's your number one choice yeah uh your rums well rum period yeah uh but the one thing about the caribbean because they are backed by by european countries mm -hmm. You also get the other choices. Uh, you also get tequilas, which hmm. is only west from Mexico. Yeah. You will get your wines, but you do get an option of different types of rum. Good. Very nice. And and I assume that you had no problem with that at all? <laughs> no. Okay. None, none whatsoever. I believe on, on the trip, and if I was to pull up the uh, trip photo album, the budget we had on beverages was seven hundred dollars. Oh wow! For five days. 
and 21 people. Yes. So that there was no short, there there there, there was no short of of of, of dry mouthedness. <laughs> Everybody was well quenched. Good for Everybody you. Everybody was well quenched, including water and your normal. Okay. All right, cool. So you had that lovely catamaran ride. Um, what was on the next? What was on your tours for the next day? The next day was uh, there's a private island off of Aruba uh, called I believe it's called Palm Island. Okay. So we did we did a whole day. It's pretty much an adult theme park. Uh, you guys, your slides. I rode a banana boat for the first and last time. <laughs> for the first and last time, you're like, I'm done. I've experienced it. Over it. I um, was not expecting the banana boat driver to say, "Do you want to go wild?" And of course, that's when I met three women from Argentina who answered the question before we could even breathe. And that's why it will be the first and last time I'll go on a banana boat. Got it. I, and we were and we were told what would happen if we would if we get it flung off. Thank the Lord I didn't get flung <laughs> off. <laughs> the banana boat was kind, it was very, very different. Some people did um what we call sea trekking, mm-hmm. where you get to walk uh, uh underground uh underground ruins. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people went see bobbing, where you kind of hold on this rocket pack, and you go up and down under the water and just take off while holding an engine, so to speak. Okay. Um, once again, food was wonderful. Uh, pretty much, it was private catamarans. Everybody just relaxed. So flamingos for the first time. Ooh. Um, now, crazy thing about flamingos, you could only walk up to them under, under security. Aruba takes care of their flamingos very, 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 very uh, under lock and key. Hmm. They raise them in the Netherlands. For those who don't know, Aruba is a Dutch country backed by the Netherlands. They're actually raised in Copenhagen and then brought to Aruba. Hmm. Um, you can only take pictures at a certain time with a certain cameraman. You can't walk up and take a selfie with them. You will get tackled. Oh, and, wow. And these are the adult flamingos. The kid, sometimes if they leave their secured area, it's okay. But they're mostly kept in their secured area. Also, adult flamingos are fully pink and white. Mm-hmm. Younger ones have black uh, feathers. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I, I knew about the pink and white. I didn't know about black feather flamingos. That sounds interesting. Very much. That's how you know they're young. Okay, they cool. Out white and black feathers. And then as they grow up, they turn into pink. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, Palm Island, awesome. Uh, very friendly. They like their social media. So if whoever goes to Aruba and you go to Palm Island, make sure you tag them. They will definitely appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good for tourism. It actually does help the tourism industry. So tour uh, a little chip to my students, it, especially if you go to places like the Bahamas, which were, which were recently hit by a horrible hurricane last year, they can really use the tourism dollar. So anything you can do in order to help, it doesn't, it doesn't mean you have to send them money. It could be that you go there and you spend money there. It could be that you, when you visit, you, just tag, you know, and, and show a little bit of the wonderful people that are there. So, you know, it doesn't cost a lot to be able to share, like, on, on things like social media and stuff like that. So it's a great opportunity to help out. There's another resort in Haiti mm-hmm. that is experiencing a lot of tourism because they've, they're building up their resorts and people are going to visit. People are infusing money into the Haitian res- resort uh, economy. Well, the economy period, um, the year of the return in Ghana, in Africa, a lot of people uh, just came back from what's called Afrochella, mm. which was held after Christmas until after little after, after Christmas until after New Year's. The year of the return um, increased the Ghanaian uh, economy. Uh, the next next big trip is to Puerto Rico. 
Mm-hmm. It's a, a event called Afro Nation. Um, the first one was in Portugal. Mm-hmm. This one's going to be in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is often hit with earthquakes. So <laughs> this is going to help improve their economy. Yeah. A lot of these affected areas are naturally beautiful. So by throwing events there will help increase their economy and improve their look upon the world. Excellent. Um, actually, I'm lying. That Afro Nation is in March. The next one is Trinidad Carnival, which is... Ugh, Carnival in general. Carnival in general is big. The biggest one is Brazil. Mm-hmm. Trinidad has probably... Mm-hmm. Number two is Trinidad. Which I have a friend who's actually down in Brazil right now. They just took off, I believe, in order to go attend Carnival down there. So hopefully we're going to get and that. I'm Trinidad. <laughs> Really, I'm really hoping to get them on video for this. I think that'll be great. Trinidadian carnivals are so major that married couples that have been married 10 plus years still go back. Mm-hmm. They bring their children. It's more than just a party. It's a cultural experience. Excellent. Okay. Um, so, so back to Palm Island. So the Palm Island, great. Uh, at night, we went to a restaurant, had dinner. The next day, the the next full day, that's when we, we did our sea bobbing and our sea trekking because we had to be sober in order to do either <laughs> or. Probably no, if you're holding onto an engine. <laughs> Did again? Probably if you're holding onto an engine, they want to make sure you're cognizant and focused. Correct. Yeah. Or if you're walking underwater ruins. Hmm. Because literally you have like the big helmet on and you're just kind of like walking around. Oh, yeah. So you, you had to make sure we went in the morning before anything took place. So this was all during Mark King weekend. Um, landed uh, pretty much Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then we came home Wednesday. Nice. Well, it sounds like you had a really full trip. I, I, I'm actually really impressed because normally I don't try and do more than one excursion a day, but it sounds like at least on the first day you had a really good day uh, event and then in the evening you had the catamaran thing too. And then that whole trip out to Palm Island, or it sounds like it was just a lot of fun. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. And this was one of the first group trips where everybody got along. There oh. were no no fights, no qualms, no, no one, no, there, was, there was no type of problems and those on these group trips mm-hmm. you may catch people there may be a group of people that's so you're not having a good time or they're not having a good time and those are always the 100 plus trips there's 21 of us seven only seven guys everybody got along we ate together we did everything together um most people like to get driven around we had our own minivans so we all and i think they didn't Unless, I guess if we had our regular license, it sufficed because they drive on, drive on the right. Yeah, they drove on the right side. Mm-hmm. So everybody, whoever drove was pretty much used to the driving. Um, everybody was fine. No complaints. Nobody, one girl fell off her ATV. That's about it. But she was mm-hmm. fine. She dusted herself off and kept it moving. Okay. <laughs> Just as long as there wasn't like a major incident or something like that. Oh, it could have been major. It was close. Um, but she was fine. Everything was perfectly fine. Nobody, everybody was cool. And no, because it was a, such a small group, we did everything together. Yes. And that was one of the biggest dynamics of the trip is the fact that we did everything as 21. We didn't leave unless there was 21. That's good. With, with the Palm Island, they picked us up on one of those team buses. Mm-hmm. drove us out there we did everything as a 21 and that's so, good that's good for safety for safety reasons as well it's not just good because hey you're having a great time but if you're traveling as a group uh, to some locations and i'm not quite sure what the security is like in aruba or if there's a criminal element in aruba but everywhere you go i know there's going to be some level of challenge um and when you go to these different places there's always okay if you have one or two people that maybe stray from the pack they are more prone to things like pick pockets or, um, right. or or worse in some cases. But if you're traveling as a, as a massive group of people, it's usually, that's, that's a good deterrent uh, for 
for those things to be preventative. Um, on, a, on the note on the return, how was your return flight and were there any challenges with going through uh, passport control or customs? So beautiful thing about Aruba is they have United States Customs in Aruba. Okay. So, and that was the first time I ever went through that. Mm-hmm. Um, the first thing is because United changed my flight, they were expecting somebody to come from Chicago. Yeah. It didn't. So I had to call my mom again to clear things up, which should have been taken care of above her, but it happens. I have a TSA pre-check. Yeah. And once you go through Aruba customs, you go through American customs in Aruba. Okay. Which is beautiful. I did not expect that. Pretty much you're going through customs twice in the same airport. That alleviates time. That's why they tell you, and this is something you should know about Aruba, you have to be back four hours before your flight because you're going through customs twice. Ah, that makes sense then. And it's a, it's not a major airport. It's, it's a it's pretty small airport. It's not a hub airport. But remember, you're going through customs twice. Yeah, that could be a little bit of a challenge. Um, so a couple of quick takeaways. Um, so when you think about going to a place like Aruba, what are the pros of going? And I know you've discussed some, but what are the pros, the biggest pros in your opinion, going to a it, place like that? It's a very calm, European-influenced island. It's not a party island. It's not the island. It's not you're going to Mo Bay. You're not going to Port of Spain, Trinidad. Mm -hmm. You're not going to DR. You're not going to one of those party uh, places. Aruba is very quiet. It's serene. It's serene. It's meant to be that way. It's a happy island, but not to say they're not parties, but it's not. Mo Bay turns up from wake up to sleep. Aruba's not like that. And that's the one thing I was looking for, especially because I live outside New York City. If I wanted to party, I party seven days a week. I wanted to relax. I wanted to lay out, lay out, lay out in the pool and just sleep a lot of people so one thing about these group trips everybody on everybody on these type of trips most of them most of us i think i'll say 25 percent of us all have a second post baccalaureate degree Mm -hmm. um i'd say 95 percent of us all have a degree if not military um everybody's well educated well well informed one thing I would say about group trips, and including Aruba, which every night when we had dinner, we had long, lengthy conversations. Um, there were deals made, meaning person A works at HR for this company, person B is in marketing, and maybe looking to jump, that connection is made. Oh, cool. Or I'm going to Austin. Well, I have now friends in Dallas who are just going to be in Austin that same weekend. We're going to link up. I now have also have friends from Jersey that that live on the West Coast. Call me when you come out here. Or friends in Chicago, when you land, let's link up. The beautiful thing about these trips, you make new friends, you make new connections. Some relationships are going to get developed out of one of these trips, whether it be business or personal. Nice. Well done. And then for maybe the first-time traveler, what are some things that a person should be aware of that maybe – they may not normally go into Aruba understanding. Uh, don't ex. Well, one thing Aruba is very multinational. Um, there's a heavy Dominican community. It's not everybody speaks proper English. Mm-hmm. They speak four languages: mm-hmm. English, Spanish, Dutch, and Papiamento, which is the slave language of of the uh, ABCs, including Saint Martin too. Mm-hmm. Well spoken, well educated. Uh, very clean, very diverse, very cosmopolitan. Understanding Aruba, you have to take out the typical Caribbean mindset because it's not like your Jamaicas. It's not like DR. It's very, very much its own. 
and I was already, I was already aware of that visiting Curacao. So it wasn't a shock to me, but for other people, people go to Aruba to chill. So in other words, don't go expecting Carnival or, or Mardi Gras or anything like well, that. This is you, much more of a they, have, they, they have their Carnival. Every Caribbean island has their Carnival, mm -hmm. but Jamaica is a walking Carnival seven days a week. Mm -hmm. When you go to Aruba, you're relaxed. You're hanging out. You're, you're, you're just chilled. So good. Um, now, as far as value adds, cost savings, um, maybe best practices, anything that uh, the viewers should be aware of in reference to those things? Aruba is very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, they, because of, I guess, importing, Jamaica is one of the cheaper islands. Mm -hmm. Aruba isn't. Yeah. Prepare to spend money. But they do accept a dollar, so you don't have to convert. But uh, honestly, be prepared to spend a little bit. Okay, cool. Now, of course, I do want to thank you very much for being part of this. So again, Professor Brent, thank you so much for all your time. I really appreciate it. Anytime. Um, to any of my students that are out there who have any further questions on this, you can certainly send me a email to scott at theprofessortravel.com. Um, I'll forward that on to Justin, so that way we are all on the same page. Uh, but for those of you who are on YouTube, please um, click the bell icon in order to be alerted when new videos come up. Uh, hit like if you like this. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And then also, if you're on Apple Podcasts or any of the podcasting network, we certainly do appreciate any of the, any of the uh, star ratings. So definitely let us know. We always appreciate feedback. And in the meantime, please make sure to make every day a travel adventure. Thanks everybody, have a great day. Goodbye now.